Let me tell you about the problem we're going to work on together throughout this course. You're the executive director of a new organization against homelessness, funded by a billionaire philanthropist couple whose interest is reflected in the name of the organization. They'd like to begin with a pilot in their city, which has a population of about one million people. The philanthropists have asked you to work with them to define what aspects of the problem of homelessness to address, what outcomes to achieve, how to achieve them, and how to evaluate whether you have been successful in achieving them. So we're going to begin by asking what is the problem the philanthropists are trying to solve and who are the stakeholders? Because understanding who they are and what their interests are will help us better define the problem before we begin to try to solve it. Homelessness is not a single problem. Uh, there are many aspects of the problem of homelessness that the philanthropists might address, but they can't do all of them, uh, even, with, even being billionaires, so they're going to have to decide what to do. The way one begins to solve a problem depends a lot on how one frames the problem. So let's begin looking at this cartoon of two people looking at a cylinder. We see that it's a cylinder, but one of the people sees only a circle, and the other sees a rectangle that may be somewhat curved. Which one is right? So now let's see how the issue of framing plays out when one is dealing with the social problem. When the husband of the philanthropist couple drives to work, he passes by a group of people, an orderly group of homeless people. Maybe they're waiting in line for a job, perhaps they're waiting for a handout, but in any event, they are very orderly. When the wife drives to work, she sees a very different picture from the husband. She sees a group of homeless people camped out in the street, living in pretty messy conditions. So here are two frames of the homeless problems that the members of the couple have. So you now begin a conversation with the couple about what is the problem of homelessness they are trying to solve. And let's look at some of the things that they might say. They might say homeless people have no place to live, Homeless people aren't able to raise children responsibly. Homeless people have no security. Homeless people congregate in some residential and business neighborhoods. Homeless people abuse drugs and commit property and personal crimes. A disproportionate number of the homeless are veterans. Homeless people are sick and get no medical care. We should be particularly alert to families who have homes but are at risk of becoming homeless. Homeless street children, especially runaways, face particular dangers. There are lots of potential problems here, but the philanthropists can only address some subset of them. So let's consider how to narrow down the problems that they will address. We've discussed the way in which the frames you bring to a problem, the perspectives or stereotypes that you have can affect the way you define the problem. Now I want to discuss another way in which problem solving can be distorted, which one might call framing by solution. So let me tell you a story which will illustrate this and then give you a more real life example. The story involves a merchant uh, who is bringing grain to a farmer's barn. And as he's ready to leave, having delivered the grain, he notices that his truck has a flat tire. And the first thing that comes to his mind is, uh, let me find a jack. He goes to the back of the truck and realizes that he left the jack in his garage at home. So he then says, how should I find a jack? How can I go about finding a jack? And thinks he may have to walk several miles to the nearest gas station. What he doesn't notice, although he saw it before, is that there's a block and tackle uh, on the barn used for lifting hay right above his truck. If instead of asking the narrow question, how can I get a jack, he had understood that the real problem is how can he lift the car in order to change the tire, he would have noticed that the block and tackle was sitting right above the truck and he could have used it to lift up the truck. So that's an example of narrow framing. Let me give you another example of framing by solution. This one from the world of public policy, an example that comes from the decision scientist Ralph Keeney. Consider a dialogue between two public officials in an agency that's concerned with transporting hazardous materials to a distant waste dump. The first one says, we should minimize the distance that the trucks must transport the material. The second one says, why is this objective importance? Shorter distances would reduce both the chances of accidents and the costs of transportation. 
But don't shorter transportation routes go through major cities, exposing more people to the hazardous materials? Notice that stopping with the first objective, just minimizing transportation distances, doesn't deal with the underlying problem and indeed may cause a greater problem by exposing more people to the hazardous waste than a longer route that didn't go through the cities. Once again, an example of framing the problem in terms of a particular solution rather than looking to the deeper roots of the problem. <laughs>